Good morning, my dear brothers and sisters. Good morning. Kumusta kayang bawat isa sa atin? Okay lang. Hopefully okay lang. And based on some problems, difficulties, we come here thanking God for opportunity to celebrate the Eucharist, to have the Word of God, and of course to have the body and blood of Christ. There was a story of a child and a man. It was The man was asking, Ta, unsay pangalan ni mo, Ta? Tag-aasa man ka, Ta? So, tanaw ang bata. Durang bata, mga 5 years old. Tanaw siya sa tao, mga 40 years old. Ingon ang bata sa iya, Naku naman ka, di pa kakabalo mag-storya. Of course, kay Ta, Ta. So, of course, the man was thinking, that this is your level and the response to that child. He wants a little bit of a certain kind of level, a certain kind of maturity in how he's going to deal with the child. And of course, you've been reflecting during these days about the Advent. When you think the Advent, it is a preparation for the coming, for the coming of the Savior God becoming with us as you think of this Christmas season, of course, December 25. But at the same time, you think also of the second coming. And what is the meaning and implication of that? Of course, in our first reading today, from the book of the prophet Isaiah, maybe they said 500 years before the coming, the birth of Jesus, and Isaiah was prophesying that you people, Israel, you'll be comforted. So when you're going to comfort the person, what is that? And of course, maybe the person having the problems, uh, you comfort him or her, by giving some amount, siguro kung naisakit siguro, tabangan niyo siya, comforting, and then maybe some worries and troubles in life to comfort. But when we talk about the comfort that God is talking here, it's because of the sinfulness of humanity. And of course, last December 8, we celebrate the Immaculate Conception, reminding us that of course, the story of Genesis, it was Adam and Eve, the first parents, then after some time, God was, where are you, Adam? So we are, I am naked. Who told you that you're naked? So we, because of this woman that you brought, and maybe did you eat the, the fruit of the tree? So this woman gave me this, and then, no, 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 it's not me. This is the serpent. So, in, in other words, So to drive us away from God through disobedience. And so from the thought of disobedience, from one generation to the next generation, from one prophet, another prophet proclaiming, I am the Lord your God and you are my people. God would like to establish such relationship and that the relationship is rooted and grounded in truth, grounded in justice, grounded in the real relationship. When we talk about the relationship, pagsasabi ng totoo, yun ang samahan ng walang hangganan. So because people commit sins because of this now, the prophecy of Isaiah, I'm going now to have a new world. And of course, a new world, we understood that from the time of the yes of Mary, she was conceived among all women to be pure, to be holy, and to become the mother of God. And the importance of Mary, of course, in the plan of God, for nothing is impossible with God. How is it possible that the woman be born without sin, from the original sin, from the sins of disobedience? It's because Mary said at the end of the dialogue, how could be I be a, I, uh, I no relationship with a woman, a man, I, how, how would it be possible? The Holy Spirit will overshadow you and the prophet, the most say all these things, you become the mother savior. And at the end of the dialogue of Mary, I am the handmaid of the Lord. Let it be according to you. So it was the yes of Mary. From the disobedience now, there is that yes. So we try to understand that perspective so that we can really appreciate what does it mean now to prepare our, the way of the Lord. And of course, Prophet Isaiah was saying, before the coming of this Messiah, somebody will be doing something. So from the mountain, it will be flattened. So some weeks ago, I passed a mental dito sa bypass dito. So na may bukit dito, ginahinay na gina. Pinalipiuhan nila, inapatag. So it took time. A mountain, you're going to plant there. It will take some time. And then he said, ito mga lubak-lubak, ayuhon. 
So we know, so most of it is your listen to that. Atong makalsada sometimes, lumak-lumak man, ayaw na. Takes time to flatten and then to make the path straight. Just imagine that there is the someone who will be crying out in the desert telling us, Can you change your life? Can you improve your life? Of course, guys, parang sabi natin, parang sa nakabukid akong sala, sa kabukid akong paglayo sa Diyos. Then, of course, during these past days, we have the confession sa parokya or sa, of course, ito kasi na yung dugay-dugay na kaya kong sala, pader, dugay na kulas na confession. For some, kung saan sala niya, huwa man ko yung sala ko, Diyos ko, Lord. Dugay na kaway kong pisa, siya arwa ko yung sala niya sa in my thoughts, in my words, in my actions, in the things that I feel. You can, you say, wala ka sala na, pwede ba yun siya? Of course. Because kay dako na kayong sala, kung ingon pa, according to our Archbishop Emeritus, Fernando Capalya, nakubala na. Nakubala ng konsensya. Hindi mo na alam yung tama at pala hindi mo na alam ang kasalanan. Because today, we are given the opportunity to understand the role, of course, the important role, one of the important characters during the season of Advent is the character of John the Baptist. He was crying out in the desert saying, to change your life, pwede bang baguhin yung buhay ninyo? And when I started to think, baguhin, mayroon bang baguhin ang buhay? Some months ago, there was a girl, mga 14 years old, sabi niya, Father, gusto ko na magpakamatay. Wow! Bakit yung magpakamatay? Kasi yung papa ko, Father, nagkaroon ng ibang relasyon sa ibang babae. So para sa anak, hindi niya ma-imagine si papa, mama, nagmamahalan siya ang pinakimportante ngayon. Pwede palang ipagpalit. So parang sinasabi ngayon na malaki ng mga ating kasalanan, malaki ng mga anak namin, Father, mga dalawa tatlo yung mga anak namin sa labas, pwede bang iwanan mo yan? Can you do that? But the human capacity will say it is a challenging one. Some days ago when we were visiting there sa SPMC, there was one, sabi niya, nagka-cancer ko pa. Nga nagka-cancer, nga nagka-cancer na siya, ma'am. Ingo siya dahil smoking daw, smoking. Isa naman na nag-dialysis. Bakit nag-dialysis? Sabihan kasi ako ng asawa ko ng father, na hindi na sana yung pag-iinom ko, hindi man ko nakinig. So ngayon, yung liver ko nasira, yung kidney ko nasira. So according sa isang doktor, doktor ato yung tinitignan ko yung sa health forum, sabi niya, hindi ka na pasyente ba? Pero wish you ka na. You know, alam mo yung mali na magsigarilo, alam mo yung mali na yung pag-ido. You just continue. Of course, we are talking na hindi yung one a day or, you know, yung everyday na ba. It is already a lifestyle. It is a part, hindi ako pwede matulog, hindi ako makain, hindi ako pwede magpaggala kung walang sigarilo. Since we come already part of my human nature, it is part already my living. But at the same time today, can you change? Pwede ba iwanan mo yan? Ito yung sinasabi din, parang bungkit yan, Padre, parang hindi kaya. So many years ago, there was a woman, sabi niya, Padre, pag sigari, sabi ko, Ma'am, pwede bang ito? Ay, hindi ko kaya, Father, never in my dream, hindi talaga. Then nga, dumating na sa 60s, then nagkaroon ng sakit-sakit na maghirap na maginawa. Sabi ng doktor, pag magpatuloy ka pa niyan, Ma'am, mamamatay ka na. So immediately, she decided, set aside, buhay pa naman siya, pwede pala. Then many months ago, just to talk about the beautiful moments that we have in this church of ours, because sabi niya, I belong to certain kind of congregation. I've been living with this man for many, many years. Iniwanan ko yung original ko, nagsama ko sa kanya for many, many years. And my experience with God, God was telling, pwede bang iwanan mo? Mahirap, but at the end of the day, she realized God is telling her, can you start to change your life? So it was the grace of God, iniwanan niya, and start that to live a life. Today, of course, we said na maganda sana, tulad ng isang dahil ng isang bata, sabi niya, Tay, pag mag-graduate ako, Tay, gusto kong kapiling ka, Tay. Pagka mag-asawa ko, Tay, sana kapiling ka pa. And I think the one of the joys, the parents here, kung makita mo pa yung anak mo, yung apo mo, ibig sabihin, you have a longer life. Pero sad story, tulad ng isa, sabi niya, Pader, namatay ito isa katao, Pader, ano man, nag-drive, nag-drive ng motor, o niya, nakahubog, patay. Then, iniwanan niyong view na may tatlong apat anak. Okay ba yun siya? In other words, when we live in this world, we are given the opportunity to reflect. That's why the letter of, Paul, the letter of Peter is telling us, one day is one thousand years to the Lord. In other words, parang matagal ba? Kailan kayo darating si Lord? 
Kung kuha siyang ibang interpretation, uy, matanda na yan siya, matagal yan siya, mamatay kasi masamang damo. Of course, maybe yes, maybe no. But we understand God is so patient so that we can really feel that the mercy and the love of God. And of course, the moment of Advent, it is a moment to wait for the coming of the Lord. But at the same time, we have to prepare the way of the Lord. And the way of the Lord can we change. And of course, one of the assignments mentioned, important role, important character to place in this season of Advent is the person of John. He would challenge us in the desert. He would tell, change your life. And of course, there was, I made mention already many years, some months here, uh, I saw in sa Cebu, there was a beautiful painting. Dalawang tao, naga-painting sila, and naga, naga fencing I mean fencing And then sa isang tao, na meron din dalawang tao nag-fencing. And then there was a beautiful caption there. It says here, the greatest struggle is not outside, but inside. If you want that to change the world, if you want that to convert, you start to change and convert ourselves. And of course, when you talk about the conversion here, when you talk about the Advent, it is the personal conversion, how to change our life. But at the same time, it is also in the social dimension. Pwede man mabait ako ngayon, okay, yung alaga ko sa pamilya ko, okay, etc. Pero yung nagabalik yan ng siya po, alam ko man, nagbibenta siya ng siya po, alam ko man, may ginagawa siyang kaloko, bahala na siya sa buhay niya. Of course. When you think of the coming of God, God is coming to us. Hindi man siya sabi niya, bahala ka sa buhay. No. God become here to tell you, can you improve your life? Why? Because we are considered as sons and daughters of God. The reason why we change our life because we are considered sons and daughters of God. And if you are sons and daughters, uh, there's an expectation. And of course, kung anak ka ng presidente, siguro, hindi ka siguro pataka na naglakalaka kay nanay mga security. The way you do things, you have to be according to that you are son and a daughter of a president. And I could just imagine if you are sons and daughters of God, what would be the imagination? And of course, the imagination, the implication is that I have to be holy to be perfect. Hindi ba, of course, sapagkat kami tao lamang madaling makalimot, marupok. And that's why Isaiah is telling that the Messiah will be coming here to give us a new life. Merong pag-asa. Merong panahong patay magbago ng buhay. And of course, when we are waiting for the second coming, along the way, some of us who die. Along the way, we live in this world. Along the way, we're going to leave our parents, our loved ones, our properties, all these things, and only to be in God. Ah, kung ganun pala yun, while I'm living in, kailangan meron akong relationship kang Jesus. I have now to have that relationship with God. And of course, the psalm would also say, if today you hear His voice harder than your hearts, the invitation to be in God is with, can you change your life? Ito yung medyo mat challenging ba? Of course, ang iba madali lang siguro, iwanan ko yung sigarilyo ko pada, parang one week pa lang ako, kaya ko yan. Pero siguro kung 15 years, 20 years ka na, parang nagiging part of system, hindi ka na makakilos kung walang sigarilyo. Oh, of course, maybe siguro yung sa relationship. I've been with that person for many years, but hindi ko na kayang iwanan. But pa pa paano yung pangako sa Diyos? I love you with all my heart, body, and soul. In the name of the Father, the Son, the Holy Spirit, you commit yourself to God. And of course, you've been living in sin. Pwede ba yung okay ba yun? Of course, okay ba siguro magsimba? Anyway, wala ba ito ang nakakalam? Maybe yes. Ito yung sinasabi natin, para bang niluloko na lang natin, sarili natin nagiging, we have been already blind. 